everyone, Tech Steve here, and this is the Samsung Q60D. And I will tell you that the Samsung 60 series has a lot of memories for me. Take me back to 2020 when I reviewed the Q60T. 2021, we did the Q60A. 2022, we did the Q60B. And 2023, we did the Q60C. This Samsung series is one of the reasons that I review televisions to this day. With that being said, let's go ahead and get out of the box, see everything that it comes with. I'll walk through the menu system, we'll do some gaming and more. So let's get into it. All right, so now let's get this out of the box. And again, this is the 55 inch model, but here's the thing, they make this TV from a 32 inch all the way up to an 85 inch. And for people in the comment section that has been asking me, I would say that this is gonna be a great TV for people who just need a particular size. Now, they do make this TV in a couple of variants. For example, here in the United States, the series we have is called the QN55Q60D. If you live in the UK, you're gonna look for QE55Q60D. For the people in France, it's a TQ55Q60D. And for Costco members, it's a Q60DD. Anyway, let's go and get this all opened up. And looks like we have those plastic feet. I didn't expect anything like metal, especially for uh, Samsung like this because this is the beginning for the QLED series for 2024 but they do have that little tab on it where you can raise the TV and lower it so you can fit a soundbar right below it. Also over here we have a power cord, instruction book as well as a uh, remote control and there's a little guide that shows you how to put everything together. All right let's go and put this over to the side. And again, I'm always going to say on every video that these are meant for two people to lift it. Uh, maybe I just have TV strength because I can always get a 55 and some 65s. So here's the feet. And again, you can raise this up to raise the TV, lower it down to lower it. And the easy thing is that you can just slide these right into place on each side. Now what I'll go ahead and do is I'll measure the distance between these feet and consider that this is the 55 inch version. I do not know all the sizes, but let's say from the center to the other center, you're looking at about 35 inches in between. So if you have a center channel, make sure it's less than that, unless you go with the bigger television. When it's in the lower position, you're looking about one and three quarter inches high, roughly. And when you raise it up, you're gonna get about two and three quarters height right there. So it's gonna take a really low profile center channel if you don't wanna put it in front of the television. You see this TV has a nice smooth back to it. And over here, there's some screw holes for the wall mount. And when it comes over to the power cord input, it uses a angled cable right there. So you would just kind of put that in right there to plug everything in. This TV does have Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi direct so you can stream your phones over to it. But back here we have two USB 2.0s. There's an ethernet connection as well as two HDMI's right here, ATSC 1.0 TV tuner, and then there's a third HDMI right here and a fiber optic output. So not a lot of connections. And again, this is a 60 Hertz television. So for gaming, it's gonna be interesting once we get into that particular part of the video. Now this is a edge lit television. And as you can see here, it is super thin. So if you mount this on a wall, it's gonna have that flush look to it. And Samsung does make different brackets for this TV to support that thin look on the wall. Here's the remote control that comes with it. And it's very small. On the back of it, there's a solar panel. And at the bottom of it, there's a USB-C connection for charging it. But you have all your basics, including pressing this down to mute the TV, home button, voice commands, as well as some hotkeys here at the bottom. Now, since you like the screen pull, on the Samsung TV, if it does have a screen protector on it, it will have a red tab here at the bottom. All right, so let's get it set up so we can uh, see what the operating system looks like. All the new Samsung TVs, you must log into a Samsung account to get access to this sidewall. Otherwise, it will be pretty much blank. Now, if I was to buy this TV, the first thing I would do is go into the settings and there's a few things I would change. First of all, from the factory, it comes in eco mode. I would switch to something like movie mode so it'll be ready for anything you play through it. The second thing I would do is go over here to sounds 
expert settings, and I will go down here to sound feedback. As you move around this operating system, you're gonna hear this beep and that can become annoying. So I will just go in here and turn this off, but you can leave it on if you like to. Now you do have a search feature and you can use the microphone on the remote control once you set it up. Open up YouTube. Next you have ambient mode. And this is great for people who want to use the TV as wall art, especially if you mount it on the wall. You can select these different themes so whenever you're not using a TV, it will start displaying these particular pictures. Now, this TV does have what they call smart things built into it. And this is gonna allow you to see all your Samsung devices in your home. As you can see, there's some previous TVs that were reviewed. You can also search for hubs like your Philips Hue system and control all these different things from the TV's menu system. And you'll have some other features like workspace, and there's a few other things in here that you can look at, including the Samsung Health. So they really set this up for people who have Samsung devices and allow you to get access from your phone over to the TV. The Game Hub shows you all your connected device. As you can see, I have the PS5 and the Xbox connected. But if you connect the Samsung to the Xbox or Sony PlayStation controller to it via Bluetooth, and this allow you to play cloud-based games. So if you already have a console, this is good as an extension. On the home screen, this is where you're gonna see all your applications and people are wondering how do you customize this list right here. So I'll show you real quick. If you press any application and hold it down, you can remove the application from that screen. If you go over to edit list, move it around as well as remove it to where you want. And yes, this TV does have a basic web browser in it as well. Now they did move things around on this software. So you have live right there, but this is where you get access to all the applications. So if you need to install new apps down here, all you need to do is press on them and start installing them. Once you install them, you can open them up or you can add them to that home screen list so you can move it around where you want it. And this is great for people who want to customize this interface. And again, if you don't want it there, press and hold down the center of the remote control and you can remove it. It's really that easy. Now at the bottom of this app list, you can go ahead and press on settings as you can see, this TV only has about four gigabytes of memory, but the way I think Samsung looks at it is that these applications are specifically made for Samsung's televisions. So the app's gonna be designed where they're not gonna take as much space as some other brands out there. Another thing about this TV, it comes with a lot of bloatware. So unfortunately, you'll have to go down here and delete all these applications that you're not using to clear up that memory that you see at the top there. So it'd be a, it's gonna be a little bit of work, but once you get it all done, at least you'll have a TV that's a much cleaner and only has the applications that you use on a daily basis. The last couple of features I'm gonna show you is down here, a connected device. You can see everything that's connected to the television. You can even connect a camera to it. Under settings, you have all settings. That's how you get to the main settings menu. You can change the speaker outputs right there. And it does multi-view. And multi-view allows you to connect your mobile device, PC, camera and kind of use them all together. So if you want to make your own, you can have two different screens side by side. And this is the modern day, what you call picture in picture. Now, when it comes to input lag, we're getting 9.2 milliseconds, which is pretty good. It will fluctuate right here, but 9.1 is the lowest I've seen it so far. So that's the input lag on this TV. So now we got the PS5 up. Let's take a look at some of the different video capabilities of this TV. So under info and connected device, first of all, I can notice that this TV is not supporting 1440p, but we'll try to override that in the Xbox. But as you can see here, it doesn't support variable refresh rate. It does support HDR. And when we go to 1080p, again, it does support HDR, no variable refresh rate. And at the price of this TV, that's something they should just give you just because everyone's doing it right now. But for some reason, Samsung's decided not to. I can see right there on the PS5, again, it's not supporting 1440p. All right, so now we're in the Xbox. You can see it does support 4K. It does not support 120 Hertz, as you can see right there. And Samsung's do not support Dolby Vision, so you'll never get it. Don't even try it. Under video modes, you can see that it doesn't support Dolby Vision once again and it does not support variable refresh rate. And on the Xbox, it will support 1440p at 60 frames per second. Again, it will not on the PS5. And if we go ahead and hit 120 hertz refresh rate, as you can see there, it will not support that.
but it looks like we can get 60 frames per second on the Xbox. So I did make a video previously where I was saying that a TV couldn't do 1440p. And I think it just comes down to the PlayStation won't support it, but the Xbox will. But just to test this a little bit farther, if we press and hold the play pause button on the remote control, we'll get the game bar. And in fact, down here at the bottom, it is reading 1440p. So this TV will support it on Xbox and it will not support it on the PS5. Now, speaking of the game bar, we have a couple of different options down here. First of all, you can change it into different refresh rates so you can get the best out of whatever game you're playing. It does have a virtual aim point and that puts this little box here on the screen. And as you can see, you can change it different colors. Now it does have screen ratio, but it is grayed out as well as the map zoom. Over here we have gaming motion plus and we have speaker outputs. Now if we go over here to the more settings, this is basically taking us into the gaming menu and we have different features like your motion settings where you can enable motion plus right there. And this is gonna allow you to control the judder as well as clear motion. But a lot of times clear motion, as you can see, makes the picture so much darker. So a lot of people probably won't use that without having to go into TV and do some additional changes. sculpted lines, swooping rear and front wings, which should allow cars to follow each other more closely. All right, that was pretty fun. But uh, this is not a full review. It's uh, basically I was getting this out of the box and I just thought I'd film it just like I've been doing some of the previous videos so you can see what it looks like and how it performs. In fact, I've had this in storage for the last three or four months and I'm just now getting to filming it. And one thing about this TV besides having great colors is that last year I did a comparison video where I compared the Q60C against the Q70C and I liked the 60C better. So I'm expecting more of the same on this television. Now, I will tell you that it doesn't have the darkest black levels. It uses uh, edge lit uh, backlights and it doesn't have local dimming so don't expect that out of this television but for every day using it for television things like that everything seems to look pretty good but the colors the colors when I was gaming the reds popped out and I was like man that TV looks really good but other than that they could improve on a few things that I'm seeing so far like they can add variable refresh rate to their whole QLED lineup not just the high end the second thing is the Tizen software where it's good, but it does have some little, little bit of lag to it. And it is a little bit harder to navigate than some of the other operating systems such as Google or LG and some aspects of it. But I'm excited to get this uh, all ready to go. So if you guys want to see any particular thing on this TV on the full review, leave me a comment below. I'm going to use those comments to create the full video as soon as I get to it. But we have one more TV to review and I'm excited to show it to you. With that being said, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to hit 200,000 subscribers by the end of 2024 and we're just right there on the edge. So make sure you go ahead and do that if you guys want to support the channel. With that being said, I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.